Yesterday, at least at the time I'm recording this, TypeScript 4.8 was released. In the last week or so, I've been playing with the release candidate and there's some cool new infer features that I wanted to share with you. Actually, it turns out there are new infer features in TypeScript 4.7 as well, which is not something I'd realized. So we're gonna take a look at those first. Let's start by talking about how things worked in TypeScript 4.6 and earlier, specifically when you want to do multiple infers. And this is only string return type. The idea here is that you can pass it a type that is a function and if this function returns a string we'll return string otherwise we'll return never so we're passing a function here that returns a string and a1 of course is type string for b1 here we're passing a function that returns a promise of string which is not string and so we get never and how do we determine this well we can use infer for this and as you know infer is always used in combination with an extend keyword so for example on line one of our type here we can see that t extends some function and then we infer r as the return value and then we have our condition here so if that is the case we actually nest another conditional here and in this one we say does r the return value extend string and if it is we return r and the nice thing of course is that this doesn't have to be a literal string we could return a union of one and two and that does extend string and so a1 here will be one and two so this is how things would work in typescript 4.6 and earlier but we can actually use some cleaner syntax in typescript 4.7 in typescript 4.7 we can actually nest our second layer of extend into the first conditional so that we only need one layer of conditional. And this is a great way to just simplify your types. So here we have only string return type two. It essentially does the same thing. It checks to see if T extends some function. We try to infer R, but after we infer R, we immediately say we infer that R extends string. So we're checking right away for some R that extends string. And in that case, we'll return R, otherwise never. So while before we would have to infer R first and then nest another conditional to check if R extends string, now we can just do those both in one conditional. Does T extend some function that infers R, which also extends string, in that case, return R. And so now maybe if we change both of these to use our second type, we can see that A1 still returns one and two and B still returns never. So this is a TypeScript 4.7 feature. Now I was playing with this in the last week or so and trying to get this to reliably do more than just two extends, it seems that although you can do that with nested conditionals, it gets a little bit confusing and I couldn't really get a nice working example of multiple layers of infer extending. Just to give you an idea of what I mean, let me show you what uh, multiple levels of this might look like. Here's an only string return type three, which takes a function that infers an R and then we check to see if that R extends a promise and we infer the return type of that promise as u. Then we check to see if u extends an array and infer s inside of that array. And then finally we check to see if s extends string and if so we return s. So here we've got multiple levels of inference going on where we're, we keep unwrapping one thing. First it's a string wrapped in an array, wrapped in a promise, wrapped in a function. I would love to be able to do this type of thing in a single conditional because if you get complex library types it's easy to run into a lot of nested conditionals and so being able to unravel all of that into a single conditional would be cool but it doesn't look like we're quite there in TypeScript yet. If you want to see an example of this in use we can have type x here which so we're passing in a function that returns a promise that has an array inside of it that has this string union inside of it and so we can see that x is email and sms. Conditionals still of course very powerful if you have two layers of conditionals looks like you can usually unravel that into just one layer so that's kind of handy. Unraveling nested conditionals is one thing that you can do from TypeScript 4.7 but in TypeScript 4.8 they have some new type support for that. Now notice that we are still here in the editor on TypeScript 4.7. We're gonna look at how we can use this nested support, specifically in the case of string literals. Let's look at a basic type here that I'm calling multiplier. And the idea here is that we take some T and then we check to see if T extends and we've got a string literal type here. So this is using the syntax that we just talked about from TypeScript 4.7, where we can have our infer do its own extend inside of our first extend. And so we're checking to see if we can infer a string here where we can find a number first followed by the letter X. 
right? So you've got a multiplier, two times, three times, four times multiplier, that type of thing. And so the type of U here is what we're interested in. So let's give this a try. We'll call this type M and we can say, let's have a multiplier of the string union 2X, 3X, 4X. And if we look at the value of M here, we can see that the value of M is number. So we were able to parse those numbers out of these particular strings. TypeScript 4.8 gives us even more specific types out of this though. So let's go ahead and switch our editor here to TypeScript 4.8. We haven't changed the code at all. It's still just a T extends infer U extends number. But now if we look at the type of M, we can see that it is two, three, or four as a union type. Basically what's happening is now when we do an infer extends number like this inside of a string literal, TypeScript can actually parse the string as a number and return that number as a narrower type than just the type of number. This works specifically for primitive values. So we've got number, boolean, uh, null, undefined, and big int, I think. And the idea here basically is that we're taking some string and in our case, we're wrapping it in the number constructor and then we're wrapping it in the string constructor again. And we wanna see, does this outputted string equal the same thing as the original string? This is what the TypeScript engine is doing behind the scenes, right? And so for this reason, if for example, we did 2.0 and we look at the value of M, we can see that M just becomes number. And the reason here is that if you take 2.0 and pass it to the number constructor and then back to the string constructor, you just get two, you've lost the point zero. So even though the value is the same, the literal string representation is different. And so TypeScript does not support that. But if it is two, then it does recognize those values and we get two, three, and four. So what's maybe a more useful example of this type of thing? Well, I tried to play around with it and what I've come up with is a phone number validator. So let's see if this works. First of all, I'm gonna give us uh, something helpful to start out with, New York area codes. This is not all of them, but I've chosen a couple of area codes that we care about maybe for this particular example. And so let's create a type here that is a New York phone number and we'll pass it a T. And what we wanna check is to see, does T extend some particular string here? And we'll have our template literal. And let's start by inferring um, part one, I guess we can call it. And we wanna see that this extends a New York area code. So we expect to see that as the first part of our string here. So after that, we're gonna infer a part two, which just will extend number. And finally, let's infer a part three extends number again. So the conditional logic can be, if those things are true, we're gonna return P1, P2, and P3. Uh, otherwise, we'll return never. So this is a great type that we can use to validate that a particular phone number is a New York phone number, and we can actually get the return values more specifically for this phone number, for example. And this, of course, is not a New York phone number, and so we can see we get the type of never. But maybe if I take the area code 680 and put that in here, you can see we get this very specific type, 680-456-7890. Excellent. Let's just switch back to TypeScript 4.7 for a second so we can see what that type would look like here. It would still work, but all we have is New York area code, number, and number. It's good, but it's not as specific as what we can get with TypeScript 4.8. So if you have a library where you could really use the narrower types of particular numbers, then this is a feature that could be pretty cool for you. Now, of course, what might actually be more useful in this case is we return true if this is a New York phone number and we return false if it's not. And this behavior is not new. What I'm showing you here where we get true for a New York phone number and false for uh, some other number would uh, work in TypeScript 4.7 and we could have done nested extends and had that work in earlier versions. So. This is really just some syntax sugar, makes things a little bit easier for you as the developer, not really breaking ground as far as like new TypeScript behavior. But I find the infer keyword fascinating in TypeScript and I think a lot of you guys do too. So I wanted to show you some of these new features that we have in TypeScript 4.8. If there's other stuff in TypeScript 4.8 that you guys are excited about, I would love to hear about that in the comments. If you like this video, I would appreciate a like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.